Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now. For just $2 a week, you can join with other English learners, practice speaking, have conversations, enjoy yourself, and use new vocabulary. We run conversation clubs every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 pm, 6 pm, and 9 pm UK time. So there's no excuse. You can join and you should join right now. Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club. Link in the description. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Last weekend, the United Nations finally reached an agreement to protect the oceans after decades of negotiations. Today, I want to talk about the UN Treaty on the High Seas, while also introducing you all to some new vocabulary. You can find the full transcript of today's episode over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. Check out my YouTube channel and Instagram page for more excellent content. Leave a like, rating and review if you enjoy thinking in English. Join my conversation club to improve your English. And here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Treaty Treaty A written agreement between two or more countries formally approved and signed by their leaders. As in, the two countries have never signed a peace treaty. To safeguard To safeguard to protect something from harm. For example, the court is supposed to safeguard our right to free speech and a free press. Marine Marine Related to the sea. For example, the oil slick seriously threatens marine life around the islands. To negotiate To negotiate to have formal discussions with someone in order to reach an agreement with them. As in, I'm negotiating for a new contract. Legal framework. Legal framework. A system of rules and ideas that is used to plan and decide something. As in, we need a legal framework for resolving disputes. Landmark. Landmark an important stage in the development of something. For example, the landmark deal secures 6,000 jobs. Provision Provision A statement within an agreement or a law that a particular thing must happen or be done, especially before another can happen or be done. For instance, we have inserted certain provisions into the treaty to safeguard foreign workers. To reach, to reach, to make a decision, agreement, etc. about something. For example, we'll inform you when a decision has been reached. Over a decade ago, the United Nations began negotiating a landmark international treaty to protect our oceans. After years of arguments and disagreements over things like fishing rights and the environment, an agreement was finally reached on Saturday, 4th of March. The UN High Seas Treaty is an historic agreement. It will protect up to 30% of the world's oceans and commits UN members to conserve and safeguard marine animals and endangered species. Considering that up to 10% of marine species are currently at risk of extinction, this new treaty is a vital step in the right direction. Today, I want to explain the UN Treaty on the High Seas. We'll look at what the high seas actually include, the background and development of the treaty, the contents of the new treaty, and suggest a few possibilities for the future. The last time the world negotiated an international agreement on protecting the ocean was over 40 years ago. In 1982, 
countries agreed on the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, is an international treaty that sets out the legal framework for the use and protection of the world's oceans and their resources. It was first adopted in 1982 and has been ratified or agreed by 168 countries. The convention establishes rules for the use of maritime spaces, including territorial waters, exclusive economic zones and the high seas. It also outlines rights and responsibilities related to fishing, shipping and marine scientific research, as well as provisions for the protection and preservation of the marine environment. UNCLOS was widely considered a landmark achievement in international law, as it helped to resolve long-standing disputes and promote cooperation between nations. However, some controversies and challenges remained, particularly around the issues as including exploitation of deep sea minerals and the protection of vulnerable marine ecosystems. The high seas, in the context of the UN Treaty on the High Seas, refers to the part of the oceans that is beyond the control of any individual country. This area, also known as international waters, extends beyond the 12 nautical mile limit of a country's territorial waters. The high seas are an important area for activities such as shipping, fishing and scientific research and they are also crucial for the overall health of the planet. The UN Treaty on the High Seas will aim to provide a legal framework for the use and protection of this area as well as addressing emerging issues related to the high seas, such as conservation and deep sea mining. Although UNCLOS was a significant treaty, there were a number of serious limitations and problems with the agreement. It was not ratified by every country, including powerful and important nations like the USA. Some of the provisions of the treaty were unclear and uncertain. For example, those related to deep sea mining and the protection of marine wildlife in the high seas were undeveloped and untested. And the provisions that do aim to protect marine life were widely seen as ineffective and not suitable to address the urgent threats facing the oceans, such as overfishing, pollution and climate change. The high seas as they are not controlled by any individual country, have been particularly difficult to discuss and negotiate. They are international waters, meaning that all countries can use the high seas to catch fish, research and ship goods. However, out of the entire high seas, only 1% are currently protected. The vast majority of the ocean is unprotected and vulnerable. Oceans are a vital part of our world. The ecosystems in oceans produce up to half of Earth's oxygen and absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide. In a recent survey by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, 10% of marine species were found at risk of extinction. The biggest risks to the ocean are pollution, overfishing and climate change. For example, last August, the gentle sea animal called the dugong was declared extinct in China due to overfishing and shipping accidents. Other animals, including sharks, whales and shellfish, are at severe risk. The increasing emissions of carbon dioxide are commonly known to contribute to climate change and global warming, but it is also causing the ocean to become more acidic. More acidic oceans are at risk to many species. And at the same time, climate change is causing rising temperatures and natural disasters like cyclones, which kill millions of animals every year. It is against this backdrop that the need for a new and clearer treaty became apparent. After close to two decades of discussions and negotiations, 
UN member states finally reached an agreement to protect the high seas and oceans. Negotiations had stalled for years, as countries argued over fishing rights, finances and sharing ocean resources. However, after 38 hours of talks in New York, an agreement was finally reached. So, what is actually in the High Seas Treaty? The major agreement in the treaty is to protect 30% of all international waters. 30% of all the international waters in the world will become Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs, by 2030. That is a massive increase from the current 1% of protected ocean. What exactly is a marine protected area? Well, this is one of the potential problems with the new treaty. While it has been agreed that 30% of the oceans will become protected areas, it has not actually been decided what protected means. Some countries want it completely protected, so no activities can be conducted there, while others want sustainable use to be allowed. The exact extent of protection will be decided later, but in any case, there will be significant restrictions on deep sea mining, shipping and fishing allowances in those areas. There are also measures or other measures in the treaty. Environmental assessments will be required for any deep sea activities and there are provisions for sharing the genetic resources of the ocean. These, o- these resources can be used in drug production and industry. A conference of parties, or COP, will be established specifically for the ocean and high seas, just like the one for climate change at the moment. Reaching an agreement about the oceans was a major achievement, but there are some potential issues. The requirements for environmental assessments, for example, do not apply to organisations already regulating mining, fishing and shipping. How to fairly share genetic resources, marine genetic resources, was one of the major disagreements stopping the signing of any treaty for years. These resources, which come from the genetic material of ocean seaweeds, bacteria, corals, sponges and other life, are highly valuable. The problem is, we don't know what will be discovered in the future. Agreeing on how to share undiscovered and potential resources has been a struggle. And, as I already mentioned, the procedure and definitions of marine protected areas is still unresolved. While a treaty has been agreed, it does not mean it is legally and officially implemented. The treaty will first need to be formally adopted by the UN, and it then only becomes official once enough countries have signed it and enforce it. Some countries, including Russia, have already expressed reservations, while the USA rarely signs any international treaties. While the High Seas Treaty is a landmark agreement, there is still a long way to go to ensure our oceans will be protected. So here is today's final thought. I think UN members agreeing to protect our oceans is a great step in the right direction. International waters are a vital part of our planet, but until now they have been open to exploitation and misuse. It is necessary to regulate and protect the seas and the life living in there. We will have to wait to see whether the agreement will be accepted by all countries. And will it actually make a difference? There is a long way to go to ensure the oceans are protected, but it is important that we start protecting them as soon as possible. What do you think about the UN Treaty on the High Seas? Do you think it's important to protect our oceans? And what do you think is the major risk to the oceans today? Let me know by leaving a comment on the podcast, a comment on the blog. Uh, You can comment on Spotify or send me a message on Instagram. Uh, Yeah, please comment. And I always love to hear from all of you. If you love listening to Thinking in English, 
please consider giving us a rating. Uh, a five-star rating on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts would mean the world to me. Uh, it's really useful for helping us find new listeners, uh, get higher in the podcast rankings and charts, but also it just makes me feel good. I want to be the highest rated English learning podcast on Spotify. And if you want to support Thinking in English, there are two ways you can support me. Number one, you can leave a donation. There's a donation form on my website and there's also uh, links in the description of this podcast and on my Instagram to buy me a coffee. And the second way, the way that's best for you, is to join my Patreon, join my conversation clubs, listen to my bonus episodes, right? And all of that you get for just $10 a month or $2 a week. Uh, but thank you guys for listening today. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Do you want affordable English classes with a qualified and professional English teacher? Well, you're in luck. Thinking in English now offers English classes. We have classes for intermediate, upper intermediate and advanced level students which focus on developing your English quickly and effectively. Classes focus on key English skills and the best part is you'll be studying with a small group of Thinking in English listeners. The price is just $10 a class with big discounts for Thinking in English members. Click the link in the description or go to my website thinkinginenglish.link to book now.